Hey creative people, in today's HitFilm Express tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make this. Today's video tutorial will be rated 3 out of 5 on the difficulty scale, it'll be intermediate. And just one quick mention before we begin, I will be using the free version of HitFilm in this software, HitFilm Express, so you won't need to buy anything, but HitFilm has just started their Thanksgiving sale, FX Home has, and you can buy all four of their pro products in their pro bundle. HitFilm Pro, Ignite Pro, Action Pro, and their new Emerge Pro. I'll leave a link down in the description, and if you click on that link, a small amount of that will also go to help fund these tutorials as well. But with all of that being said, let's just get straight on into this title. I've got a completely blank project here, so I'm starting from scratch. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a new composite shot by clicking New, Composite Shot in the Media Panel. I'm going to rename it very quickly. And then I'm also going to change the duration to be something like four seconds. When I've done that, I'm just going to hit OK and a new composite shot will be created. Now it's time to create our text. Just go New Layer, Text, and it'll create a new text layer. Now you might notice if you followed some of my previous tutorials, this text is actually a bit different. They've updated text in HitFilm Express so that now it's less bound by just boxes and you can just type freeform text like so. So just click on the text tool and just start typing in your text. Then you can highlight it all. I'm going to hit Control A to highlight everything. And just like normal, I'm going to go down into the text panel over here, select my font, character, and everything like that. What you might want to consider doing today is to increase the character spacing. This will make sure that the letters are further apart and it'll look a little bit better when the letters come in individually. I'm quickly going to head and go back to my normal tool. Then I'm going to go into the controls and under transform, I'm just going to adjust the anchor points so that the text is roughly in the center of the frame. Okay, so now it's time to start animating our text. Although all of the letters are going to be done separately, to start off with, I'm just going to do all of the text as though it were the first letter. I'm going to have one second where it starts coming in. I'm going to have one second where it stays in the middle and then one second where it moves out. So let's put this into action. Open up the text layer and open up the transform in the timeline window here. We're going to be adjusting the position value. Go to one second. You can use the time code here if you want to go to an exact second. And enable keyframing for our position by clicking on the circle next to the position. This will create one diamond keyframe here, which saves that at this point in time, the position value will be zero, zero, which is at the center of our frame. Then go to zero seconds and just drag the Y value up, or you can do down whichever way you want it to come from at the beginning so that it's just out of frame. Now when you play it back between the two keyframes, it'll move from the first to the second. What you can also do is just highlight this, then hit Control C on our keyboard, go to two seconds, paste that keyframe with Control V, and then go to three seconds and drag it all the way down. All right, so now it looks like this, but it's not quite smooth enough. To just make everything smoother, you can highlight all of the keyframes and then click on the manual bezier here in Temporal Interpolation. Select that and play it back. You should notice that it'll be a little bit smoother. However, it's still not what we want. I'm going to go into the value graph and that way we can adjust the position better over time. So just click on the value graph there and we'll open up the whole value graph. When we click on a value, it'll show the value graph for that uh, variable. And the variable we want to look at is position. On the y-axis, we have the position or the value we've clicked on. And on the x-axis, we have time. We can see our value changing over time. The x value, the red, stays completely still because it's in the middle. But the y value up and down changes over time. We can adjust the interpolation of this to see how our value changes. Let's just zoom into the first second here to see what's going on. I want the text to immediately start coming down and only really smooth out at the very end. To do this, I'm going to drag the handle down and actually up in this case so that it goes down faster and then smooths out towards the end. And I'm going to drag this one a little bit like this. Now let's play back and see what it looks like. As you can see, it comes in pretty fast. I might not want it to be that fast. So 
I'll adjust the values again until we get something that's a little bit smoother. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out quickly and then I'm going to do a similar thing for the other one. I'm going to drag this down and I'm going to drag this across as well. Now it's probably a good idea at this point to adjust any of the final things we want to do to our text, be it the position or anything else. For example, I'm going to go into the layer properties and in the blend mode, sorry, not in the blend mode, I'm just going to turn on motion blur here. At the beginning, you can see that now our text is more blurred and it makes it look more realistic as it's coming down towards the center. Now it's time to split this text up into its individual letters. I'm quickly going to exit the value graph and just rename this one to C. Then I'm going to duplicate it five times, one for each other letter other than C. Of course, you'll have a lot more letters or a lot less letters. You'll just have to duplicate it so you get one layer per letter. So I'm going to hit Control D, which will create a duplicate. So that's the R. This will be the E, A, T, and the final E. And I can go ahead and rename each of these accordingly by right-clicking Rename, or I can also go ahead and click F2, like so. So if I select this layer, F2, and then I'll name this E. Now they're all named correctly, but they're actually all the same layer. We're going to separate each of these so that they're individual letters. This little eye icon next to all of these letters is a toggleable layer visibility. So I'm just going to head, go ahead and toggle all of these to be off except for the first C. Then I'm going to grab the rectangular mask tool. Just click on it and then drag over your C. And now you've got a C which is masked out. As you can see, the mask moves with the position value, so there's no need to create one big long mask over here. It should just mask out the C and move the C accordingly. Next, go to the R. Show the R, hide the C, and just mask out the R. Sorry, not on the C layer. Make sure you select the R layer, then mask out the R. Then, hide the R, show the E, select the layer, and do the E. And do this for all of the letters. All right, so now we have all of our layers individually. But as you can see, it still moves just like it does before. But there's one really easy way to fix this. All we can do is just move them back a couple frames in time. So I'm just gonna zoom in so we have a clearer view. Now each one of these will be one frame. My comp is currently at 30 frames per second, which means that there are 30 frames for every second of footage. If I want the difference between all these letters to be one second, I can make each of these five frames difference. So let me just show you how that's done. I can drag the R to the five, five frame mark, and then I can drag the E to 10 over here, and then the A to 15, and so on. I'm just going to do this until 25, like so. And now let's play back and see what it looks like. Each of the letters comes in and goes out individually. Of course, you can customize all of the timings in between here. You can customize your text and create it your own. But that's the basics, and that will do it for this tutorial. If you liked it, then be sure to hit the like button. And of course, you can subscribe to my channel, Shiny Films, for more content just like this. Make sure to check out that Thanksgiving bundle, that Thanksgiving sale, sorry, on that HitFilm Pro bundle with HitFilm Pro, Ignite Pro, Action Pro, and Emerge Pro. And again, the link for that will be in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Stay shiny.